Time to get started on the speaker stands now and I've got some offcuts of plywood here which I will use to make them. I cut the ply to size for the monitor stands and you can see here that some of these pieces were quite warped but once they were cut into small pieces the warp in the boards was barely noticeable. Here I'm cutting the tops for the stands. And here I'm cutting the sides of the stands. Some of the ply pieces were different thicknesses so I needed to compensate for the difference in thicknesses by cutting some of the side pieces 2 or 3 millimeters wider so that both stands would look identical once they were finished. Then I could cut the pieces to length at the mitre saw. I used glue and brad nails to assemble the stands. Then I measured up the opening and cut some back panels. Before gluing in the back panels, I found the centre of these by marking up from corner to corner, then drilled a pilot hole in the centre, and then I used a forstner bit to drill a 35mm hole. I drilled the holes from both sides at the drill press to avoid tear out and get a nice clean cut circle. And this would be used to run cables through as the inside of the speaker stands would be used for audio devices and external hard drives, that sort of thing. Next I could start cladding the stands with the offcuts of floorboards that I had left over. The idea was to give them the same rustic appearance as the tabletop, so I cut them to size and glued and nailed them on. Then I could trim up the front to hide the plywood edges and also give the stands a nice chunky look. So I cut a 45 degree angle on one end and then marked up the other side, made the cut and glued and nailed it in place. Then I could trim up the side pieces to the right length and attach those too. I used some clamps to help close any gaps on those joints and left them to dry overnight. The following day I cleaned up the bottom edges of the stands with my hand plane and then set the nails below the surface of the wood to try and avoid damaging my plane iron. Then I used my benchtop belt sander to help clean them up with an 80 grit belt and sanded with my orbital sander at 120 grit. I applied the walnut stain in the same way as I had for the tabletop. And I finished them in the same way too with three coats of spray varnish, wet sanding at 400 grit in between coats and I gave it three coats in total. I added some of these adhesive backed felt feet to the bottom of the stands too just to keep them from rubbing on and potentially damaging the finish on the desktop. So the Lerberg legs have arrived and now we need to fix these to the underside of the table. And these trestle legs don't come with any fixings and they don't have holes in them either. So I need to find a way to mount these to the bottom of the table. The easiest way would just be to drill straight through this metal into the plywood and add a few screws and that would be pretty easy to do because judging by how light this is 
the metal is probably quite thin. But screws on their own won't be particularly strong. And if the desk gets moved at any point, I would be worried that the screws would just tear out of the plywood and the desk might collapse. So for that reason, I want to add some bracing to the underside of the tabletop, which should make the desk frame more rigid. I want to position the legs so that the outside is roughly flush with the side of the desk. So I'm just going to eyeball that and I'll make some marks with a pencil. Then I can measure up and that's 12 centimeters. So I will make the same mark on the other side. I've got this pine bed slat and this is exactly the same thickness as the top of the trestle leg. So I'll use that to make the bracing. This side of the desktop is designed to be the back and this is the front. And I'm going to position the legs so that they're closer to the back rather than the front because that's where the majority of the weight is going to be. I cut the bracing pieces to size and glued and nailed them in place temporarily. You can see here I'm squeezing the two pieces together, sandwiching the trestle leg in the middle to try and achieve a nice snug fit. Then I drilled pilot holes, countersunk the holes and added screws for extra strength. And this should be a nice snug fit. I added more bracing to the ends. So once the desk was finished, I delivered it to the client and she seemed really happy with it and her cat Bowie seems to like it too. This project took around a day and a half in total and the cost of materials was around 40 pounds.